Today, I'm going to talk about quantum stability distribution for ensemble source, ensemble sources, which is a joint work uh, with Andreas Winter. And before starting my talk, I would like to thank uh, the organizers for this nice workshop and also giving me the opportunity to talk here. Uh, so, okay. Since as you already know, quantum stage distribution is a source compression task, I thought it is better to introduce a little bit of the background and make the connections here. So, uh, okay, let's start with Schumacher compression. Uh, Schumacher, uh, for the first time, studied the compression of quantum sources in 90s, and he defined a quantum source as a pure state shared between an encoder, let's call it Alice, uh, which we denoted by I, uh, and a reference system which is usually inaccessible and is a passive uh, party in display. So uh, he considered many copies of the source and uh, wanted to compress this system AN with a CPTP map and map it to another system of a smaller dimension, which we call it C here. And then the uh, aim of the decoder is here uh, to reconstruct system AN in such a way that the overall state is very close to the original state and the correlations with the reference system is preserved. And we define the rate of the compression task uh, and Schumacher defined the rate of the compression task as the dimension of this compressed system over the copies um, that appear uh, in the source compression task. Here, yes, we have a diagram of the compression task for Schumacher and we have the encoding and decoding operations here and the dimension of, uh, we want to reduce the dimension of this compressed uh, system here. And the rate is defined as the logarithmal dimension of this compressed information over the copies. And basically Schumacher showed that for this compression task, uh, the optimal uh, quantum compression rate is equal to von Neumann entropy of the source. And the other, uh, the other important example that Schumacher considered uh, in his paper was that, uh, was this uh, ensemble of pure state. And basically, he showed that for this ensemble of pure states, again, the optimal compression rate, rate is equal to von Neumann entropy of the source. Uh, we can show that uh, this ensemble of uh, pure states is equivalent to this uh, classical quantum state in the sense that if we want uh, to preserve the correlations, uh, on average, with respect to this probability distribution here, it is equivalent to preserve, pre preserving uh, the fidelity for this overall classical quantum uh, state where this uh, classical system here X plays the role of the reference system. So these are uh, the two important source models that uh, Schumacher considered. And uh, let's move on to uh, quantum compression with side information uh, where an encoder or decoder or both of them have uh, some kind of access to some system which we call it side information. Probably the most well-known one uh, in quantum information is the state merging task. It is, the source is very similar to that of Schumacher. Basically, uh, we have a pure state shared between encoder and a reference system, but the decoder has access to a quantum system, which we call it uh, side information at the decoder side. And uh, the optimal rate for a state merging task is this uh, half of the mutual information between system A that uh, is the system to be compressed and the reference system. Uh, however, uh, unlike Schumacher case, when we move from the pure state sources to ensemble sources, then um, this uh, transition is not very straightforward. And this problem, the second problem here, is get, uh, gets very complicated. Uh, this problem, uh, ensemble state merging, um, was studied by Anne et al. in 2006. And basically, they considered this source, this ensemble of pure states shared between Alice and Bob. Uh, they couldn't find the optimal compression rate, but they just showed mm, mm, the optimal compression rate for this uh, for some special cases of this source. Uh, so the most general one, however, for, for the pure states is this, uh, when the encoder and decoder both have access to side information, and this task is known as quantum state distribution. There is a similar source to that of Schumacher. Uh, however, here C is the side information of the encoder and B is the side information of the decoder. And this is this work is due is due to Devetok and Yard in 2009, and they showed that the optimal quantum compression rate is equal to uh, conditional uh, mutual information um, given the side information at the decoder. So 
The source model that we consider is the ensemble generalization of quantum state redistribution. Basically, we consider this ensemble source here, where system A is the system that we want to compress, uh, C is the side information of encoder, and B is the side information of the decoder. And these uh, systems, R and X, play the role of the reference system here. And uh, similar to Schumacher, we consider many copies of the source. So before moving on to the results, I would like to mention all the special case of this problem, this, this general system model that we consider that have been solved already in the um, literature. So of course, uh, we cover um, both the models of Schumacher and also this uh, celebrated uh, classical quantum Slepi and Wolf problem by the Vitok and Winter. Uh, and there is this state merging in both coherent and uh, and the normal state merging. So there is this uh, ensemble state merging. Of course, uh, it falls into this uh, subcategory of the model that we define and the uh, conventional uh, state merging by Devetok and Winter. And also this other variation of classical quantum step and wolf where we want to compress quantum system when uh, the decoder has access to this classical register here. And also the interpolation between visible and blind Schumacher compression also fall into this uh, subcategory, basically it's a special case of uh, the general model that we defined. So here, uh, the task is shown in this figure, basically uh, the parties have access to many copies of the source. And also we assume that the parties uh, the encoder and decoder share entanglement between uh, in registers A0 and B0. And the goal of this task is uh, for Alice to compress system A and map it to system MN of smaller dimensions, send it to Bob, and Bob wants to reconstruct system AN in such a way that uh, the overall final state is very close to the original final state and the correlations with the reference systems XN and RN are preserved. Uh, so we consider two uh, figures of merit uh, for this closeness that I showed here. Uh, so uh, the first one is the block fidelity, which is very conventional in data compression. And also uh, it is the uh, figure of merit for, for example, for quantum state redistribution, state merging, and also Schumacher compression. We also consider another one, which is per copy fidelity, instead of considering um, uh, pr uh, wanting to preserve the fidelity for whole blocks of state, we want to preserve the fidelity for each copy of the state. And of course, this uh, second criteria is looser. Mm, therefore, we uh, we expect to get smaller rates uh, com compared to the um, case when we consider block fidelity. Okay, uh, so um, all the rates that we obtain for this specific model are uh, in terms of a single letter function, which appears in the rates. And this uh, single letter function is defined for this source that we have already defined. This is our... Uh, ensemble quantum state redistribution source. And let's uh, consider this peak omega uh, as the purification of our source where this register X prime purifies our source. And for any positive epsilon, we define this function, which is a function of the epsilon here. And uh, okay, this function uh, seems very complicated, but I want to make connections here with the rate of the conventional state redistribution. As I already mentioned, the rate of conventional state redistribution is equal to this, uh, mutual information, like uh, half of mutual inf information between system A and R, even B. Here we have a similar mutual information, but rather we have an optimization here over uh, single copy encoding and decoding operations. So the single copy encoding and uh, decoding operations resemble very much to that of uh, many copy. That is, we have um, encoding operation which maps system A and the side information to compressed information here is Z and also reconstructed system Z and the decoded decoder, which maps the compressed information together with the side information at the decoder B uh, to the reconstructed systems A and B in such a way that the fidelity is preserved for uh, one copy of the state. And here, this rate is very similar uh, to the rate of uh, quantum state redistribution. However, in of system A here, we have uh, the compressed information Z and uh, mm, we have a function which is a, we have a function which is of the function of this epsilon appearing in the, the fidelity. So the important uh, quantity here is the limit of this function at zero, which we define it as Q tilde of zero. And okay, some properties about this uh, function is that uh, Q epsilon is a non-increasing and convex function of epsilon, and also it is continuous for positive values of epsilon. 
However, there is some issues uh, at epsilon equal to zero, and we cannot show that whether it is continuous or dis discontinuous at epsilon equal to zero. The main result uh, is that we show that considering per copy fidelity, the optimal compression rate uh, is equal to the limit of function at zero, which we define it as Q tilde of zero. And uh, when we consider block fidelity, we can find uh, lower bounds and upper bounds on the optimal rate. And the lower bound is this uh, limit of the function and the upper bound is the value of the function at zero. So if I bring this function again, so if we could prove that this function is continuous at uh, epsilon equal to zero, then we could show that uh, whether we consider block fidelity or uh, per copy fidelity, it doesn't matter and we get uh, the same compression rate. So uh, because of the time, I'm going to skip um, how we prove this achievability and, and converse bounds for this protocol. Rather, I'm going to talk about the uh, interpret interpretation of our results. So let's uh, go back again to this uh, seemingly complicated function. We have this Q of epsilon that I already defined. Um, so here we have a problem in this function and this is, um, that, and it is that this system Z here, which is a compressed information for single copy is potentially an unbounded system. And uh, that's the main mm, reason why we cannot use conventional arguments such as uh, compactness to show that this function is continuous at zero or not. So that's why uh, we, um, uh, that's why uh, we want to introduce another function, uh, which is again a single letter function. And sometimes this function is easier to evaluate and sometimes it's actually tied and is equal to Q of epsilon. So let's consider again the source that we have already defined. This is our ensemble quantum state redistribution source. And this big omega with register X prime purifies this source for any positive non-negative epsilon we define a similar optimization problem over this in, um, single shot encoding and decoding isometries. It is very similar to the previous uh, encoder and decoder. However, we have um, like these isometries here and this uh, W is the environment system of this encoding isometry and V here is the uh, environment of the decoding isometry. And again, this uh, optimization over these uh, isometries in such a way that the fidelity for one copy of the state is preserved. And uh, the mutual information here is between this register X, classical register X, and the environment of the encoding operation. And similarly, um, like uh, uh, the, the, the limit of this function at zero is very important and we call it uh, K tilde of zero, uh, the limit of the function at zero. Uh, so we can show that this function is non-decreasing and convex function of epsilon and it is also continuous for non-negative values, uh, sorry, for positive values of epsilon. However, we have again a similar problem here that we cannot show whether this uh, function is continuous at zero or not. So, uh, so the main relation between these two functions is that Q of epsilon is lower bounded by this mutual informa information minus one half of uh, K epsilon. This mutual information here is uh, the rate of conventional quantum state redistribution as I mentioned already because we have a system to be compressed and the whole uh, reference systems here given system B which is the side information of the decoder and when the system C uh, of the source is trivial we have equality here and so let's talk about this inequality here more uh, as we said if system C is trivial then we have equality here and uh, an example of this kind of sources is the source that we consider in 2018 uh, by winter and there we can show that Q of epsilon is equal to this uh, mutual informa information minus one half of K of epsilon. So mm, we, can, uh, we can state that this uh, K of epsilon is not necessarily easier to evaluate, but in some cases, for example, for irreducible sources, and uh, we can show that it is um, the, the limit of the function at zero is equal to the value of the function and they are both zero. And by irreducible sources, we mean that ensemble of sources where um, the source states doesn't fall into uh, two or more orthogonal subspaces. In that case, it's uh, like that we cannot read the identity of these uh, states coming from the ensemble. 
And for that, we can show that the optimal compression rate is equal to this uh, mutual information here, which is basically uh, the rate of um, conventional quantum state redistribution for this purified state here. Because uh, as you can see here, we have system A and these all reference systems are X and X prime, given the side information at the decoder. So the other important example is the uh, example considered by Ahn et al. in 2006. So they consider a, a, an ensemble of uh, pure states between Alice and Bob. And uh, they consider system A and B are cured and system C is trivial. Uh, then, uh, the, they, uh, then for this specific so source, we can show that the reduced state on system A is equal to identity. Therefore, it doesn't depend uh, on X. And we can show that the mutual information between X and the environment system is zero, of course. Therefore, this K of epsilon is equal to zero. And we don't have that continuity issue. Basically, for this uh, source, uh, our result uh, is as follows, that uh, um, optimal compression rate, considering block fidelity and per copy fidelity, is equal to half of uh, entropy of this classical register X here. So if, uh, if I want to conclude this talk is that uh, we considered a very general entanglement assisted compression protocol considering uh, both per copy fidelity and block fidelity. We showed that if we consider um, per copy fidelity, we can find the optimal compression rate, which is equal to the limit of the function that I already defined at zero. And if we consider block fidelity, we, we obtain upper bound and lower bounds under rate. The upper bound is the value of the function at zero and the lower bound is the limit of the function at zero. Uh, so even though we obtain uh, this single letter bounds uh, on the rates, uh, the problem is that uh, we still have uh, an unbounded optimization here because of uh, this system Z, which appears uh, in the definition of Q of epsilon, which is potentially unbounded and uh, this also is the reason why, why we cannot show this function is uh, continuous at zero or not. So if we, if we were able to, con to show this, then this would imply that the optimal compression rate considering block fidelity and per copy fidelity, uh, they are both equal to each other. So, and the other important open question here is that uh, in, in the source model, in the task that I defined, uh, we consider that uh, encoder and decoder share entanglement in registers A0 and B0, as you might recall. Uh, so uh, we, we assume that they use this free entanglement, but the main question uh, is that, uh, do they really need this entanglement to, uh, to perform this task, or this is something that we can avoid? So yes, uh, with this, I would like to conclude my talk. Thanks. Thank you, Sara. Um, uh, while we're still recording, let's ask the two standard questions. Uh, what do you think will be the first application of entanglement assistance? Uh, so um, so um, the, the thing that comes to my mind actually, so since I'm not very familiar with uh, the experimental aspects of uh, um, entanglement assisted uh, protocols, but to me it seems, seems like implementation of uh, teleportation, for example, in large, uh, when we have a uh, large distance uh, and uh, like transporting quantum information from one side to another. Yeah. Uh, yes, this, this seems to me uh, the most plausible thing that uh, one needs to do. And what do you think would be uh, the biggest challenge in the your field related to this? So I think the biggest challenge is uh, to implement, uh, I think at the moment is the biggest challenge, for example, to uh, like to perform this specific task that I said is to uh, build, the, build the devices and properly correct the errors in the devices and uh, for the channel, yes. Uh, 